Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101. We are doing hand lettering month here, all the month of, what are we in, May? <laughs> Can we believe that? The year is nearly on its sixth month. I can't believe that. Anyways, um, one of the issues that I've heard a few times um, from people that are doing hand lettering and, and just lettering on rocks in general is they go off of their rocks. And I was having that issue when I was doing my live um, last week. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to come up with a quick little hack uh, to help keep your words on your rocks. Uh, help with your spacing. This isn't necessarily about making your letters pretty. It's about making your letters fit on your rock. Hello, Cindy. Uh, so what you need for this is a piece of lined paper. Um, the thickness of your lines doesn't matter too much. It just matters um, with what kind of size of lettering that you want to do. Good morning, Linda, watching from Indiana. Is it morning there or afternoon there? I can't do the time zones off the top of my head. So um, I do have this rock that is already has a pour paint. We did pour painting last month, so I have loads of these around. And I'm going to take my piece of paper here. Hi, Kat. Hi, Mary. And I'm going to trace. And I'm going to trace a little bit under the edge. I also want to try to make sure that I've kind of got my lines, you know, as many lines on my rock as I can for what I want to do. So I'm going to just kind of keep my pencil at an angle. Can you see this? And I'm going to go a little bit inside the edge because you're always going to have that lip on the edge of your rock. And I'm just kind of sketching around. It does not have to be perfect by any means. It's just to give you an idea of about how big the surface area of your rock is going to be. So I find it easier to not work with a lot of extra paper. So I'm just going to trim this right off here like so and get that extra paper out of the way. Now you have to decide what you wanna write on your rock, obviously. Um, for these, I'm doing more than one or two words because I wanna practice um, my spacing. So, um, let's see here, let's see. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, oh my goodness. I have a huge blank. Anybody have a kindness rock that they would like me to do? Let's see here. Uh, how about today? Oh, my pencil needs to be sharpened. Yes, you can. All right, so. You space it, use your lines that are on your piece of paper, okay? I try not to actually touch um, from the bottom line to the top line. You wanna have just a little bit of space just so your letters aren't actually touching on your rock. But just like that, you've kind of got your rock idea. Now I've got painter's tape that I use just because that's what I always have handy on my crafting table. And I'm gonna line this back on my rock. I'm gonna take and kind of pull, like roll my edges over just to verify and double check that I am on my rock. Oops, sorry, I was off of the screen. Um, so I'm just kind of rolling over my edges. See that? So I can make sure this is all gonna land on top of my rock like that. And then I'm gonna hold it in the center and I'm gonna tape the bottom around to the back. There we go, just like that. Now, I have a very unsharpened pencil here. Let's see if I have another one lying around here. This one has a little bit better. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my lines on my rock. So I'm just gonna start with this top line here. I'm gonna fold my paper back towards myself on that red line. And you can kind of see if your paper is double-sided that you're straight once you get folded over. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and do a very light not pressing hard, just enough to give myself my little guideline there. See that? Okay, and then I'm gonna unfold my paper and then I'm gonna go down to my next line and do the same thing. Again, once you've got it folded, make sure on the back side you're nice and straight, like that. And we're gonna give ourselves a little light line. And fold and do the last one here. So you could technically do this, if you have a big rock, you could do this with lots of, lots of lines to give yourself um, a long phrase. I know a lot of people do Bible verse rocks. This would work really good for that. Okay, and then we're just gonna give ourselves that last line here. Just like that. Okay, so they're kind of light, but I'll bring it up close. You can see I've got 
all those lines, all three lines. Now, depending on how many lines to your text you have is how many lines you have on your rock. Now, I just put this right here next to me while I'm working. And today I'm not focusing on actually doing fancy script or lettering. I'm gonna grab, I was using my Micron pens, but I'm gonna grab a thicker one because this one, the letters are bigger. So I'm gonna grab my black. Make sure this is, okay, so. Good morning, Debbie, hello, Sandra. Sorry I'm missing some of the comments, guys. All right, so we're gonna start with our top line and work our way down. So you just use that like it's a piece of paper. So you can kind of write a little bit easier, I find, when you have lines to follow. I mean, we've all written on lined paper plenty in our life, right? But sometimes moving it onto a rock is why it's hard. So giving yourself these little cheater lines can really help. Now, I also like to look as far as spacing so, you know, you can find little things like my can is right in the center. So I'm going to do that word next. And obviously you can do your hand lettering that we've been working on with the fancier text as well. Just like that can. And then we're going to space our yes you. I'm going to bring my you this way just a smidge just because I can see that I might run out of space here. Yeah, it actually should fit if I put it under that Y. I think I made my Y differently is my issue. <laughs> so I'm going to move my Y just a little bit to the side because it's a tall letter. So I'm going to go Y here. O, U, and yes. There we go. And see, now your words are right on your rock. They're not going over the edges, not losing them off the bottom. And sometimes if you cover too much of your pretty design, then you know you get frustrated with that too. So you have to let your ink dry really well, but then, um, and I don't even think I have these. I will go back and add these to the supply shop. I wonder if I can find my wrapper. These are, I just opened a new one. Um, high polymer erasers, but a white eraser is going to work better than say the eraser on your pencil. I mean, this has a coloring to it anyways, even when you erase on paper, sometimes you get some of that pink stuff. So I like using the white eraser. Plus it's easier to be able to tell if the tip is clean. So you can clean it off really easily in between and tell that it's clean. So I'm going to show just how easily you can kind of come on here and erase your lines. I'm not going to go right up to my ink yet because I want to give that a little bit longer to set. But see, you can do just circular motions and those lines will come right off for you. See if I can get up here. Um, also with these erasers, you've got uh, four really pointy corners. You know, I use them sparingly. I try not to switch over to a new corner till I absolutely have to. So I'm going to get right in there. It's probably almost dry already. Posca is really dry fast. Um, I just don't want to risk it because it really hasn't been on there that long. So, but you can see, you can get right in there and erase that pencil line. Let's see. We're going to go for it here. And just don't forget to occasionally erase off that tip. You don't want to be moving your, uh, pencil around because you can smudge it if you've got a bunch of pencil on your eraser. There we go. Right in there. So there you go. See? You can get right in there and erase those lines. And this should help for those that were having issues with... I've seen it a lot. My words just fall right off my rocks. I always run out of space, things like that. You can find lined paper also that is skinnier. This is almost like a wide ruled um, notepad that I just happened to have on my desk. And I thought, you know what? I was going to give this a try. And so I did the go with the flow one back here using that same process. Because I, I do tend to try to test these things before I should. There we go. So today, yes, you can all on the top of your rock. So I hope this uh, tutorial helps 
at least a few of you guys out there with your spacing on your rocks. Um, you can obviously come in here and add some extra little designs, dots, swirls, whatever you want if you have the desire to do that. Um, next week, guys, I don't believe that I'm going to be hopping on live. I'm going to be uh, traveling to visit uh, my sister and family. So um, if I don't bring all my equipment, I may not be able to do another one. But I don't really have another idea of what I would do for lettering month anyway. So just keep practicing. Keep leaving those rocks in the comments and we will see you all soon. Bye-bye.